If you're a real Sacramento Kings fan, hit that like and subscribe button now. Right now. There's no time to waste. Episode 15 of the Royal Report with Calvin and Barry, a Sacramento Kings sports talk show. If you are a Kings fan, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Calvin and I are not professionals. We are fans just like you. We devote our free time to making this show. So if you are a Kings fan, if you do enjoy this show, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, leave, leave us a comment down below. Yeah, we thank you very much for all your support out there. As always, thank you for watching on today's show. The Kings are red hot again. What does Sacramento do with Marvin Bagley when he returns? And there are some new faces on the Sacramento Kings already putting their thumbprint on this season. But we begin, as always, with highlights from around the league. So a couple announcements this week of key important dates coming up this summer. June 22nd, you can go ahead and circle it on your calendar as the NBA Draft Lottery. Normally a very important event for Sacramento Kings fans as we continue to find ourselves in the lottery. This year is no different. Hopefully we will make a push for that last playoff spot and not be included in the lottery. But if we are June 22nd, the NBA Draft has been announced as July 29th. So two dates to keep an eye on for uh, this coming off season. Some other exciting news around the league uh, centered around your Sacramento Kings. De'Aaron Fox has been named Western Conference Player of the Week, highlighted by a career high 44 points this week. He also had a couple amazing 30 something plus games. He's averaging almost 25 points a game this season. He is having an incredible year finally getting some recognition, so happy to see that. Also wanted to congratulate Tyrese Halliburton winning his second Rookie of the Month award. I think it's uh, technically his third since he didn't win one for December, um, but with uh, Lamella Ball out, uh, Tyrese is continuing to exceed expectations, so I know all of our Kings fans are, are very happy to see that. Yeah, congratulations to both Yaron and Tyrese. It seems a foregone conclusion now that Tyrese will win Western Conference Rookie of the Month and Darren Fox has been playing like the player of the week for it seems like a long time now as well. So congratulations to them both. Speaking of another guy who's playing on a very high level, Russell Westbrook is in his bag as Mark Jones would say. He became the first player in NBA history this week to post a 35 point 20 assist triple double he then followed it up with another triple-double in his very next game. He's leading the NBA in triple-doubles this season at 18, which of course he is no uh, surprise or secret to be at the top of that list as we have come to expect that from Russell Westbrook. Maybe one of the most underappreciated players in modern NBA history. Westbrook's often criticized for his poor shooting, but his stats are just staggering. He's one of only six players in NBA history to have a 50 point triple double and oh yeah he's done that four times in his career. Moving on to the buyout bonanza that took place as the trade deadline came to a close. A lot of movement and a lot of uh, new faces on new teams. It's no surprise that the three teams who were the most active on the buyout market are title contenders. That would be Milwaukee, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets. Milwaukee signed a pair of point guards in Jeff Teague and Austin Rivers, while the Lakers, of course, landed big man Andre Drummond. And of course, the Brooklyn Nets signed not only Blake Griffin, but LaMarcus Aldridge as well. A lot of movement around the league, Barry. Yeah, a lot of movement. As you mentioned, uh, Drummond is headed to LA to join the Lakers. Luckily for Kings fans, he is not active tonight against the game. Um, I know we're also facing the Bucks this week, so a couple, couple tough games with some new additions, uh, but here we go. Here we go. And one other uh, little footnote, 
former Sacramento King DeMarcus Cousins signed with the other LA team, the Clippers, as well. Wow, big, big move for the Clippers. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with your Sacramento Kings week cap. Halliburton lead the break. And the jumper is good. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, the Kings are red hot again. They are 7-2 and two in their last nine games. Had another great week this week going 2-1. and one. Harrison Barnes, of course, was the hero against the Cavs with a game-winning turnaround fadeaway three to win 100-98 in a thrilling game. The Cavs have played good defense all year long, so no secret or no uh, surprise it is that that game was low scoring, but the Kings made the right play at the end. De'Aaron Fox with a great inbounds pass hit Harrison Barnes exactly where he needed to. After that, the Kings found themselves in a fairly uh, interesting playoff style back-to-back -back on the road situation against a team that's currently in the playoffs in the San Antonio Spurs. Game one, they came out shooting the lights out, Sacramento that is. They, were sh they shot rather 56% from the field and 50% from three. Game two, they cooled off a lot. Greg Popovich and the Spurs definitely made some good adjustments as you would typically see in a playoff series anyway. The Kings shot 42% from the field and only 31% from three in that second game. DeJounte Murray and the Spurs defense really made things difficult for De'Aaron Fox in that second game and Harrison Barnes really struggled shooting as well, going just two of eight from the field. Not to mention DeMar Rosen had an excellent, excellent game in that second game scoring 26 points. Yeah, another amazing week for the Sacramento Kings, you know, two and one. Uh, three uh, exciting games to watch. I think for me, the, the most entertaining game uh, this week was that Cleveland Cavaliers game just because it was back and forth it, all game long. It was really close. All five King starters were in double digits. 36 points for Deer and Fox. A heck of a game. Um, I know the Kings fell behind with a little less than two minutes left. They came back. Deer and Fox had a had a and one layup with like six seconds left. Made the free throw. Unfortunately, the Kings didn't play great defense in that next possession, letting Colin Sexton run all the way down the floor and getting a, a BS <laughs> goaltending call on Rashawn Holmes, which ended up putting them up by one. And look what happens. Cross-court pass, all the way down the floor, looked like a football play, and Harrison Barnes hits a turnaround three at the buzzer for the W. Reminds me of a game uh, winner of LeBron James. Just uh, an amazing play. Um, I don't really know what to say about it. You're not going to make that shot many times, so lucky enough to make it. Very happy to see that. Uh, two games against the Spurs. The Spurs are always a tough team. Very well coached, um, very fundamentally sound team. The first game against the Spurs, Greg Popovich would be proud of this Kings team. They only turned the ball over six times. As you mentioned, they shot the ball lights out, 56% from uh, field goal, 50% uh, from three-point range, and 80% uh, from the free throw line. And they, they basically controlled that entire game. Uh, they controlled every aspect of that game, and, and they pulled it out there at the end, which was good to see. That second game against the Spurs, um, Popovich and made some adjustments. The Kings didn't shoot so well, and, you know, they didn't play defense. They gave up 120 points that game. They haven't given up, or they hadn't given up 120, point game, uh, 120 points in the last six games since their last loss against the Philadelphia 76ers. So red hot defense during that five game winning streak, unfortunately it came to an end against San Antonio, but let's gear it up and get ready for the game tonight against the Lakers. No Anthony Davis, no LeBron James, no Andre Drummond. Let's go Sacramento. That's right, the Kings should be able to take advantage of the Lakers squad in this game. And another thing that I wanna mention about the previous week for Sacramento, some that we're going to talk about in this next segment, but the bench. The bench really stepped up big time. They got these, these new additions, DeLon Wright, Terrence Davis, Mo Harkless. You know, that first game against Cleveland was literally their first game in a Sacramento Kings uniform, so still getting adjusted to playing with the new team. But those two games against uh, the Spurs, they all of those guys really contributed in big ways, and I think it's going to really be a key focal point for the Kings moving forward if they can continue playing 
at a high level is having a bench, a second unit that's going to come in and not only be able to shut teams down, but also put up points. That's something that they have struggled to do uh, ever since Tyrese Halliburton has, has moved into the starting lineup. So on that note, we're going to take a little break and we will be right back to talk about the new additions to the Sacramento Kings. Knocked away and stolen. And an and one the other way to start for Terrence Davis. All right, we're back, and we are talking about the brand new additions to the Sacramento Kings. I know the Kings didn't make any flashy moves during the trade deadline. However, they did bring in some valuable pieces off the bench. They didn't give up a lot to get these guys, and they added some defense, um, some scoring, and some playmaking off the bench. We're talking about Mo Harkless. Terrence Davis and DeLon Wright. Calvin, how are you feeling about these guys? Well, pretty good given the short sample size. I, I mean, I we talked about it on the show last week. I, I really did like the addition of DeLon Wright to replace Corey Joseph in the backup point guard role. Um, he's a guy that can do a lot of things. As a veteran, you know, can bring some leadership like Kojo did on this team. I do want to mention one uh, error that I, I did say on the show last week. I said that DeLon Wright has a championship ring from the Toronto Raptors. Turns out they did not choose to give him a ring, even though they could have. He did play on that team that year. They just didn't give him a ring, so I was wrong there. But uh, still, you know, this guy is a very solid NBA player, NBA point guard. He led. The Kings uh, off the bench with 16 points on Wednesday night against the Spurs. Uh, also added three assists, two steals in that game. The game before that, the one the Kings won against San Antonio, Terrence Davis led the Kings off the bench with 14 points, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, and Mo Harkless added 13 points of his own. But really it's the big picture, I think, for the Kings bench. This is a, a unit that, you know, since Tyrese Halliburton has become a starter, and even really before that, he was playing more like a starter than he was a sixth man. You know, they haven't had anybody, um, you know, one or even two guys that you could really rely on for scoring as well as defense. And now they have multiple of those players. The bench scored 36 and 34 points respectively in those two games against San Antonio. And if they can get that kind of production consistently moving forward, you know, even when Marvin Bagley comes back, who knows, maybe he even comes off the bench too. That gives you even more scoring. It could make that second unit pretty formidable. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, for one, I was uh, surprised to find out DeLon Wright didn't have a ring as well. You know, I've, I've known Canadians to be very giving people <laughs> and uh, give them a ring, I guess. I don't know. As you mentioned, all three of the guys, all three of these guys have had awesome weeks. Each one of them has put up double-digit scoring this week to help the Kings. But the guy I'm most excited about is DeLon Wright. He is playing great. He is having a career season. This dude's played over 310 games in the NBA. That's over four full seasons of games. And this year, he's having a career high in points, rebounds, assists, uh, per. He is killing it. And all his shooting numbers are, are up above career averages as well. So... Happy to have him on the team. As you mentioned, Mo Harkless um, brings some defense. And, you know, I don't want to forget about Chris Silva. I, I know we, we're not talking much about him. He doesn't play many minutes. He's a young guy. He's only 24 years old. But, you know, I'm excited what, what he can bring to the Kings uh, coming forward as well. Yeah, all these guys, when you mentioned youth, I mean, Terrence Davis is only in his second year. And DeLon Wright hasn't even turned 30 yet. So these guys have a lot of, a lot of games left ahead of them. So... It's, it's a very encouraging sign to see for the Kings. We're going to be taking a quick break, and we'll be right back. Seven at the free throw line. Get an easy two there. What's up, Kings fans? We're back, and the Kings are back. Back in the playoff race, that is. They are 22-26, and 26, only four games back from the elusive 500 club. I know, myself included, uh, many Kings fans were excited this season. Early on, especially the Kings were able to remain around that 500 and, and even actually be uh, above 500 for a short time. So happy to see them creeping closer back to that. Seven wins in the last nine games, bringing them closer to that spot. They're a game back from Golden State. 
in that playing tournament. I am excited. If you're a Kings fan, write us down in the comments. Tell us that the Kings are going to make the playoffs this year. That's right. We need all the encouragement we can get as Kings fans. We got to help lift each other up together, you know. Um, but it is, it has been very, very great to see the Kings play um, at a high level these past, you know, nine, ten games or so. Obviously, De'Aaron Fox has reached a level where we expect him to be a 25 to 30 point, seven assist, six, seven, eight rebound guy a night. You know, that's a, a type of performance that can really carry you throughout the course of a regular season. Tyrese Halliburton has continued his great play as well. So behind those two focal points, these, uh, these new additions that are coming off the bench now and hopefully getting a healthy Marvin Bagley back to the rotation. Not to mention Rashawn Holmes has been his steady self. Um, however, for the Kings, it's the same old story. It's consistency. You know, are they going to be able to continue to have these weeks where they don't have big lapses, lose three, four, eight games in a row? Um, that's going to take them right out of playoff contention again. So it's all going to come down to the defensive side of the basketball. The Kings are sixth in the NBA in scoring. They've been putting up points all year long. That has not been their problem. It's simply making one or two extra defensive stops throughout the course of a game. That's going to result in a few more wins, which could make or break a playoff run or, or achieving uh, the goal of getting to the playoffs. So, you know, 29th in scoring defense right now, that number has got to improve for the Kings moving forward. And we hope that it does. Yeah, and you, as you mentioned, uh, Rashawn Holmes is, is absolutely killing it for the Kings. He is playing like a starting center in the NBA. Harrison Barnes has, has been invaluable to this team. I know he's not always there on the scoring sheet, but he does all the little things to hold this team together. Uh, you know, the Kings had a lot of decisions to make at the deadline on whether to keep these guys, keep a Harrison Barnes, keep a Rashawn Holmes, keep a Buddy Heald. Uh, I know the offers weren't there for you know what they wanted, but I think they made the right move in, in holding on to these guys and continuing to let this core develop. The Kings need to get healthy. I know we've said it all season long. Hopefully these new additions will help them weather any injury storms uh, coming soon. Yeah, I think it's positive, positive outlook looking forward here uh, for Sacramento, especially with the the solidified bench uh, moving forward. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna have our very first ever special guest on the Royal Report. Stay tuned. What's up guys, we're back on the Royal Report and we have a special guest this week. Our buddy Rich, he runs a Sacramento Kings page on Instagram. He's also active on YouTube and a couple other platforms. I want to do a quick shout out to Rich. He is known by many as Kings at the Table. You can find him on Instagram at Kings at the Table. He is a hardcore Kings fan. He posts videos, podcasts, all sorts of stuff, Sacramento Kings. So go ahead and give him a follow uh, if you are interested. And without further ado, Calvin, you want to introduce Rich and... Uh, See what we're gonna ask him? Yeah, thank you so much, Rich, for being a part of the Royal Report. We love everything you guys do out there at Kings at the Table. Guys out there, if you're watching, if you ever wanna have a good time watching a Sacramento Kings game, make sure you jump on Instagram and check out Rich's live feed. He's always a hype man for the Sacramento Kings. It is super entertaining and very makes the game very, very fun to watch. So without further ado, let's get into it here, Rich. We want to know from you, you know, Luke Walton has been a, a very hot topic for the Sacramento Kings last offseason, moving into this offseason. The question is, you know, would you, how would you rate Luke Walton's performance so far as head coach of the Sacramento Kings? And is he the right guy to lead a young Kings team into the extended future? Hey, I want to say thank you, Calvin and Barry, for having me on the show. It's an honor to be on. As for Luke Walton, I want to say that he gets thrown under the bus a lot by our fan base. It's like an easy target. You know, we tend to forget the players that we have on our team. We just really only had a starting lineup for the most part. I mean, our bench is, was very bad, and we didn't have any rotational guys to come in off the bench, score these points, or even slow the other team down. It's like starters and that's all and try to keep those guys in 
with the bench players and those, those guys get tired and, you know, the rotation was all off. And even if you look back to last, last season, we had a bunch of injuries. I mean, you can't blame all this on Luke Walton. Don't get me wrong. He's not the best coach in the NBA, not even top five, not maybe not even top 10. But, I mean, come on, give the guy a break. You know, Luke Walton isn't as bad as he's, our fan base says it is. I think, says he is. I think he's a pretty decent coach, man. He, his rotation, substitutes rotations, is, I like it. It's spot on. He doesn't go too deep in the bench. He makes the guys earn their minutes. As for play calling, it's a little iffy. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. But out of the timeouts, he draws them up. He, you've seen that play with Harrison Barnes. I mean, come on. That was all, that was Luke Walton drawing that up. Dude was right open on the corner. Guy came for the double team and he just knocked it down. But going back to Luke Walton, man, I, I'm just trying to say that I don't think he should get all the blame. I'm not against moving on from him, but I'm just, I'm in the middle with Luke Walton, man. Um, when it comes to this, the future of the Kings, the future coach, can Luke Walton be it? He can. Is he it? I'm not sure. If we get into the play-in tournament, make, in, make the seventh or eighth seed and get into the playoffs after the play-in tournament, how could you argue he's not the coach? And then if he doesn't, then that's when all the flags, red flags will come up. Um, I don't know who could take over as a coach. I've always wanted Mark Jackson. That's a guy I want for the Kings. He's young. He he motivates the guys. I mean, I think that's a perfect fit for the Kings. But, I mean, as in Luke Walton being the coach for the future, he can be, man. Thanks, Rich. Uh, very thoughtful response. I uh, totally agree with you. Um, also wanted to thank you for being here on the show. All the fans watching, if, if you uh, agreed with Rich's post or if you disagreed, let us know down in the comments how you feel about, about Coach Walton and whether he'll be with the Kings in the future. Um, but thanks again, Rich. Uh, we'll see you thank on you, the Rich. next show. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Royal Report. The next topic we're going to cover here on the show is the big conundrum of Marvin Bagley. Bagley has missed the last nine games for Sacramento since fracturing his hand. He's probably going to be out at least another two weeks. The question is, what do the Kings do with him when he comes back? He was a starter, of course, before he got hurt. However, he wasn't necessarily playing starters minutes or even playing in late game crunch time situations. He's averaging a little over 25 minutes a game this season. Barry, I personally think the Kings would be better off playing him off the bench. They have added these new guys to their rotation. I think Bagley is somebody that you could run the offense through in that second unit. And as these guys like Terrence Davis and Mo Harkless and DeLon Wright become more comfortable playing with him and around him, they could end up being a really, really strong second unit. And that's something that could end up saving the Kings big time in, in some major situations down the stretch and win them some games. I'm not sure what it would do for Bagley's confidence or how he would feel necessarily to come off the bench, but certainly I'm not taking Tyrese Halliburton out of the starting lineup. So the question is, are you going to pull Buddy Heald off the bench? We know that was something that he was very uh, unhappy with last season. I don't think you're going to take Harrison Barnes or Rashawn Holmes out of the starting lineup either. So I think it makes a lot of sense for Sacramento to play Marvin off the bench for the rest of this season, see if he can kind of gain some confidence playing with that second unit. He could be the focal point of the Kings offense when that, that second unit is out on the court. I think it could be uh, really productive and really helpful for them. Yeah, what a, what a conundrum it really is. You know, this season for Marvin Bagley has been all over the board. He's been healthy, he's been injured. He's, had, he's played well, he's played bad, he's had drama with the team, drama with family. It's really been all over the place. Unfortunately, he is injured again. He has missed the past nine games with a broken wrist. The Kings won seven of those games. So I, I think it's pretty certain that they don't need him right away. They need him to come back when he's healthy, when he's ready to contribute. And when he's ready to, like you said, probably come off the bench, be a contributing member of this team, and not hold back the Kings on defense. 
I think that bringing him off the bench um, would be a very interesting dynamic, especially having him play next to a guy like Hassan Whiteside. I know Marvin's not known for his defense, so playing next to a defensive juggernaut like that could help him quite a bit. Um, he could learn from Hassan. He could also you know, move out more towards the three-point line. Uh, we've been seeing him hit that three-point shot with a little bit more consistency this season. So that will be interesting. On the other side of the spectrum, he's due 11 million next season. It's a team option. The team has already picked it up and then he enters free agency and uh, restricted free agency. So the Kings can match any offer for him or they can let him walk. I don't know what bringing him off the bench is going to do to his psyche, to, his, to the Kings ability to re-sign him or get him to buy in with this team. But you know, you got to do what is best for the Kings. The Kings are winning games without him. And I, I think they got to try something new. And, you know, Marvin Bagley has, has been pretty consistent this season as far as scoring. He has had seven games this season um, under double digit scoring. The Kings won five of those games. Um, but like I mentioned, the last nine games he has missed, Kings won seven, lost two. They certainly can compete without Marvin Bagley. Um, it's just a, a matter of finding a way to get him to buy in and, and adding the valuable aspects of Marvin's game to this team and hiding um, any inefficiencies that he might have. Yeah, and look, it really comes down to the age-old saying that as a player, you just have to be ready when your number's called. You know, Marvin is a long time removed now from being the number two drafted uh, player out of Duke, a guy who was, has been very, very highly rated ever since coming out of high school. You know, th things are different for him now, and that, that's okay. Uh, you know, it can be different. He still has an opportunity you know, to work his way back into the lineup, whether it be in Sacramento or with a different franchise in the future. But I, I think if you're Marvin, you just have to be focused on doing what you can do to contribute at a high level, whether you're, you're coming off the bench or you're starting when you return from this injury and, and trying to focus on making a run, you know, for, into the playoffs with this team. That, that's when a team makes the playoffs, they have all these guys accepting their roles. You know, you, you don't have anyone who's trying to do too much out there or who is unhappy with their, their current situation, they're all focused on the, the one goal and that's winning the game and making the playoffs. And I think it, it also goes back a little bit to what our guest, Rich, said earlier in his comments and that Luke Walton makes these guys earn their minutes anyway. That, that seems to be one of the, the things that he um, is steadfast on and, and I like it. I think he, uh, that's a good thing to make people earn it. And Marvin is probably the one guy on this team who has to earn it more than anybody else at this point in time, I would say. Yeah, and, and you know, being a number two overall pick doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, you, you got paid a little bit more, the expectations are, are higher, but you know, in this game, you gotta, you gotta earn everything. You gotta earn every minute, you gotta earn every point. And you know, the Kings just released a number two overall pick from Duke this week in Parker. So they've shown that it doesn't matter where you're drafted, the best player is gonna play, and it's whatever's best for the team. I don't know what Marvin will eventually become in this league. You know, he, his numbers are, are pretty much the same every single season. I don't see much growth from him. Uh, he's a little bit better at shooting threes, worse shooting free throws, points, rebounds, assists. All that stuff is all consistent over his entire career. So. I don't really see much growth from him. If he does be t become a, a 20 and 10 guy without defense, it, what's that gonna do for your team? So still a lot of questions with him. It's really hard to you know, make an accurate assumption of, of what Marvin's thinking and, and what he realistically thinks he can do for this team. So we're just gonna have to wait till he gets healthy, bring him back and, and see whatever, whatever he can, he can give the Kings. We'll be right back guys. With the 12th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State University. We're back Kings fans and we're talking about the 2021 NBA draft. 
As of today, the Sacramento Kings are projected to have the 12th overall pick in the NBA draft. Look who they drafted last year at number 12. <laughs> and they also have their own second round pick projected to be number 42. They do not have any other draft picks this year, so they are stuck with their own picks. Calvin, who are the Kings drafting at number 12? Well, it's really hard to say, um, you know, where the, the draft pick is going to be right now. That's a, a, a tough prediction to make. But there are a handful of players in this draft, whether you're in the top five, in the top 10, or the top 20, um, I think that could really help Sacramento. Again, just like last year, I would be focusing on bringing in a player who is a 3 and D wing player or even upgrading at the power forward position. We already talked about Marvin Bagley and the big question mark with him moving forward. So I think, you know, small forward, power forward is probably the position range that they should be targeting with that first pick. I know a lot of guys that you're going to mention are all great candidates. I think they're, they're really um, exceptional players as well. So a couple guys that I found are, are maybe some reaches or late round, late first rounders depending on where the Kings are picking. My first one is Moses Moody. He's a six foot six freshman out of Arkansas. Really made a name for himself recently as Arkansas made a good run to, into the Elite Eight in the tournament, but he led them in scoring all year long. He is one of the best three and D players in this draft that is available. Uh, I think he would be an excellent pick if, if he was available wherever the Kings are picking. And then the other one um, is Maybe a little bit of a reach, especially if the Kings are, are in the top 15. But Greg Brown is another freshman player out of Texas, six foot nine power forward, excellent, excellent rim protector, and an elite athlete for a guy his size. Uh, I think he would make a lot of sense for Sacramento if uh, some of these other players that we're going to mention are not available. Yeah, and you know, just because the Kings are projected at 12 now doesn't mean they will end with 12. We still have the NBA draft lottery and trades and all that fun stuff too. But as of right now, we are just going to take it with where it's at and we are going to pro project some guys at number 12. Some guys that have been mentioned a lot that I am big fans of. Number one, Scotty Barnes. Number two, Zaire Williams. Two really exceptional college players, very young freshmen. Uh, have a lot to add to their game, but their ceilings are sky high. Both uh, forwards, small forward, power forward guys, um, great offensive players, still have some work to do on the defensive end, but ready can, to contribute. I think right away, I think both of these guys can come in and, and, and do something for the Kings. So I'd be happy with either of them at, at pick 12. Um, also, Corey uh, Kispert out of Gonzaga. He is absolutely killing it. He is a senior. He is the oldest player in the top 20 projected picks. So that right there just shows you how well people really like his game. And then the last guy I wanna mention, um, his brother is, is actually in the league, Mo Wagner. I know he was drafted by the Lakers. Last time I saw him, he was in Washington. So not sure if he's still there, but his brother is absolutely killing it in college. He is a small forward, projected to go number 13, and he is a defensive first guy. Um, exactly what the Kings need, and I would be happy to welcome him on this Sacramento roster. Yeah, Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner's younger brother, um, really multi-talented wing player. Can handle the ball, uh, shoots very well from outside, and, can, and is really efficient at getting downhill to his right hand. Um, and scoring and has a lot of size. You know, he, he is a very prototypical NBA wing player right now. So ex absolutely, that would be a great, great pick, I think, if the Kings could land him. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, cowbell questions. I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, Christopher Walken. Happy birthday. To be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time to turn the show over to you, the viewers. Thank you for your questions this week. Thank you for all your questions. And if you ever want to have a question answered by Barry and myself on the show, leave it in the comment section under this video. Hashtag it, cowbell questions. We look forward, as always, to hearing from you in the future. Let's get our first question from the announcer. Who will play in Sacramento longer, Terrence Davis or DeLon Wright? This is a tough question. 
You know, both of these guys were added by the Kings. Um, they are both young players. The Kings didn't really give up much to get these guys. It feels like they might have been brought as a late season push for this year's playoffs. Um, but I'm not really sure what their futures entail in Sacramento. I do want to say uh, DeLon Wright is, is on, under contract next season for like $8 million. So he is definitely more likely to be on this team, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, Monty McNair has, has continued to preach uh, flexibility, cap flexibility for this team. So he uh, easily enough could be a cap casualty at the end of the season if they choose to go a different direction. Yeah, I think if you're looking at just from a pure upside uh, point of view, Terrence Davis would be the answer simply because he's younger. He was a second team all rookie last year um, in his second season in the NBA. But my answer is going to be DeLon Wright. I really think that he is going to find himself a home here in Sacramento, not only is he under contract next year, like you mentioned, but just that veteran leader who can go out and, and get buckets as well. Um, knows how to play the game, plays defense. You know, a lot of this is really going to depend on who the head coach is going forward too. That that always sometimes messes with the rotation. But I think DeLon Wright is here to stay in Sacramento for, for some time. So, next question. What's your favorite thing about Golden 1 Center? Well, I, I'm struggling to remember what it's like to be in Golden 1 Center, but... Man, I, there are lots of things to love about this arena. It is so beautiful in there, state of the art. Uh, one of my favorite things about Golden One Center is the Rush Lounge, though. I had the, the opportunity to go into the Rush Lounge once um, in my, my entire time of going to games at Golden One Center. I had a fantastic time. It's a great place to watch the game in its own right. Great drinks, great atmosphere, um, you know, super good time, super fun down there. So I'll say the Rush Lounge. Good choice. Uh, definitely had a lot of fun in the Rush Lounge. Wonderful, wonderful place. It's That's a really tough question for me, but I, uh, I'm probably going to have to go with the Homer pick here, and, and I'm going to say my favorite thing about Golden One Center is it's uh, the home of the Sacramento Kings. And it is the home of the staying Sacramento Kings. They didn't move. They got it done. They built the new arena in the middle of downtown. It is super fun to go to before the game, after the game. There's always a ton to do. I do like uh, the very top level. Um, you can go to the little brewery up there. Sierra Nevada brews a beer specifically for Golden One called Proud Ale. I really, really enjoyed that beer. And you can actually buy a standing room only season tickets for like less than a hundred bucks. You can go to all the games. This is pre-COVID, of course. Uh, you can go to all the games. You can stand up top, uh, drink some beers, and watch the game from a really, really cool level. Um, the app is amazing. I love how you can order food from your seat. I love how you can adjust the temperature. Uh, really, I just love the entire arena. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to say my favorite thing about Golden One is, is the Sacramento Kings. And let's not forget the food. I, Golden One Center has some of the best food of any major pro sports stadium in the country, I think. It's excellent. The location in the middle of the valley is amazing. And, you know, they source all food and beverages um, from 70 miles within the stadium. So incredible there. Next question. What game are you looking forward to most this week? Well, the easy pick is the Lakers because you always get up for a game against the hated LA Lakers. However, I'm going to go Milwaukee for this week in particular. And the reason for that is because I want to see if the Kings can continue this high level of play against a very quality opponent. The other three games on the schedule this week, the Lakers obviously are a great team, but no LeBron, no Anthony Davis, and now no Andre Drummond. And then they got the Timberwolves and the Pistons who are bottom feeders in the NBA. So. I want to see how the Kings come out and play against Milwaukee. Yeah, great pick. Uh, that's probably going to be the most competitive game uh, this week. But, you know, I'm going with the Lakers game. I love to see the Lakers get whooped. No LeBron, no AD, no Drummond. Let's go, Kings. Let's get another W. We'll get closer to Golden State. And, hey, let's put another L in that loss column for the Lakers. L stands for Lakers. <laughs> Always fun 
to see the Kings beat up on the Lakers. Absolutely. That's all the time we have for questions today. Thank you again for your submissions. We'll be right back to wrap up the show. We want to thank you all for joining us on this week's episode of The Royal Report. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. We have four games coming up this week. Uh, tonight, the Kings take on the LA Lakers. Uh, later, they take on the Bucks, then the Minnesota Timberwolves, and next week they take on the worst team in the league, the Detroit Pistons. Calvin, how many games are we winning this week? Oh, we're getting four this week. It's going to be a, a tough, close game against the Bucks, but they're going to pull it out, and I can already hear the beat LA chance now. <laughs> they're, they're getting that W tonight against the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm not even worried about Minnesota and Detroit. Kings are playing well right now and it's gonna continue on through this week. Also wanna give a special thank you and a shout out to our special guest, Rich from Kings at the Table. Thank you for your uh, contribution to the show this week. We look forward to having you on again in the future. Barry, go Kings. Go Kings, let's get it four games this week. Let's get four W's. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week. Go Kings. Thanks guys.